in Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. What can I do for you? I stopped by to pick up my dividend statement. Ah, yes. Well, my secretary has your files. You'll be right back. Fine. Uh, do you do you smoke cigars, Mr. Mooney? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> May I have one? <laughs> Thank you. Jack Benny always pulls that on me. <laughs> Very fun. Well, you know, I never did. Some actors have to be on all the time. Uh, so I've heard. Oh, that could be very annoying. I could never be like that. I think it's unprofessional. I say once an actor walks off the stage, he should leave his work there. Be like everybody else. Uh, very commendable. I've learned to relax. Like Irving Berlin said in that song many years ago. Lazy, I want to be lazy. Uh -huh. I want to just lay in the sun with no work to be done. Yes, I remember that. Ooh, under that awning they call the sky. <laughs> it was a very Stretching and yawning, you let the world go drifting by. Yes, well, I yes. want to peep <laughs> in the deep tangled wildwood, counting sheep while I sleep <laughs> like a child would. With a great big police full of books to read while it's peaceful, while I'm killing time, being lazy now, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> Maybe I can find your file, Mr. Burns. It should be here under the bees. All right, Martin, Miller, Munson, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> under the bees? <laughs> Maybe we'd better wait for my secretary. I uh, hope you don't mind waiting. Think nothing of it. Now that I'm not doing an act anymore, all I've got is time on my hands. <laughs> you and I nothing but love in view. And if I fall, once and for all, I'll see my dreams come true. Moments to spare for someone who can't oh, Excuse fall. me, uh, Mr. Burns. Yes, yes, oh, I was here, ma'am. All right, what? Well, uh, hope you, uh, uh, but uh, we could. Uh, Time uh, on boom. my hands, you and I. <laughs> ah, Mr. Mooney, don't be embarrassed. Nobody ever lets me finish a song. Uh, all right. uh, would you care for another cigar? Oh, no, no, go right on with your work. Yeah. I'll just sit here and look at the stock report. Oh, yes. My, I envy you, Mr. Burns. How's that? Well, being able to retire in the prime of your life, just sit back and to collect dividends. Well, that, that might be true about some people, but not about me. Huh? It kills me not to be doing an act. Well, why did you stop working? Well, I've always liked to work with women. I had a great act going with Carol Channing, and then she left me. She went into Hello, Dolly. And then I did an act with Dorothy Provine, and then and, and she went into television. And Connie Stevens went into pictures. Well, why don't you find some other girl to work with you? Mr. Mooney, comedians are not that easy to find. Got to find a girl with a kind of a pixie personality, eccentric, way out, a real kook. A girl like that is very, very hard to find. Here's the contract, Mr. Mooney. Well, it's about time you got here. I've been trying to find Mr. Burns' file. Oh, oh, George Burns. How do you do? Oh, you've been a favorite of mine for years. Oh, thank you. Oh. oh, I used to watch you all the time on radio. You watch me on radio? I mean, I, I, I used to listen to you on television. You listen to me on television? Yeah, that was the year my picture tube went out. You should have gone back to watching me on radio. Ah! Oh, you say the funniest thing. This is Carmichael. I've been trying to find Mr. Burns' file. It is not under the B's. Oh, I must have put it under the X's. <laughs> Why would you put the B file under the X's? Well, that poor little file never has anything in it. <laughs> well, where is it? Well, now, I don't know. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, I bet I know what I did. 
<laughs> you see, Mr. Burns, I always have trouble remembering names, so I took a course in word association. Now, Burns reminds me of fire. So you filed it under the F's? No. No, fire reminds me of stove. So you put my file under the S's? <laughs> no, stove reminds me of pot roast. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> You filed it under the peas? No, pot roast reminds me of noodles. Mrs. Carmichael, you're making me angry. <laughs> making me hungry. <laughs> noodles reminds me of my mother. It's your turn. <laughs> noodles remind you of your mother? Yeah, she made the best noodles, and I bet that's where I put your file. Under noodles? No, under gravy. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I know what I'm going to do with her. Start a whole new career. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. Have you ever thought about going on the stage? Oh, all my life. <laughs> how, how would you like to do an act with me? Oh, Mr. Burns, you can't be serious. I know it. That's why I want to get back on the stage. <laughs> oh, what do you say? Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Burns, but I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't quit my job here. Why not? <laughs> because it wouldn't be fair to you, Mr. Mooney. You need me. Good help is hard to find. Well, I'd be delighted to start looking. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Carmichael, this is a great opportunity for you to make a lot of money. Yes, I, I know it does sound like a wonderful opportunity. Yes. But, oh, and you know, today, my horoscope said that my, my whole future was going to take a turn for the better. So did mine. <laughs> oh, uh, how much would I make? Well, it's, 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 it's unprofessional for an artist to discuss money. Oh. That's usually handled by your agent or someone who handles your financial matters. Oh, oh well, Mr. Mooney usually handles all my financial things. Yes, yes, and I'd be delighted to represent you in this matter. Would you? Yes, indeed. For the customary, 20%. 10% is customary. <laughs> oh, 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you see, I, I'm new to show business. <laughs> You two talk it over, and when you decide on what you want, you can get together with my agent. Fine, fine. Uh, here's my address. Be at my apartment tonight, and we can start rehearsing. Your apartment? <laughs> nice and quiet there, and nobody will bother us. <laughs> well, I, um, I hardly know you, Mr. Burns, and going to your apartment, uh, you, you in show business and all. Mrs. Carmichael, you don't have to worry about a man like Mr. Burns. She does, too. Well, I didn't mean that you aren't a gentleman, Mr. Burns. I just meant that... Well, I meant you're a man, and if I go to your apartment, people might talk. What people? There won't be any people there. And when I talk, nobody believes it anymore. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Bye, Mr. Burns. Well, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely apartment. Well, I'm glad you like it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Are you ready to try a little rehearsal? Oh, yes. I can hardly wait to find out what I do on the stage. <laughs> First, you've got to learn how to get on the stage. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. See, yes, making, sir. making an entrance is very important. Oh. Now, let's see. Where are we? That'll be the wings right there. Oh, uh-huh. Now, uh, this will be center stage. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is and that the audience that's, out there? That's, that's the audience. Okay. Now, we're introduced over the house mic. Oh, are we? Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, George Burns and Lucy Carmichael. <laughs> <laughs> now, the orchestra plays our entrance music. Oh, well, what is our entrance music? Some of these days. Oh! Now, let's make our entrance. Let's oh, go into From the over here. Now, you walk out just like I do. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, here they are, ladies and gentlemen, George Burns and Lucy Carmichael. Now, there's music. And I'm walking out, and I'm bowing, and I get to the center of the stage, and when I get to the center of the stage... <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Um, uh, honey, you, you walked out too fast. Oh, well, I guess I've waited so long to go on stage that I, I was kind of in a hurry. <laughs> you, you belong over here. Oh, over here? Over there. Oh. That's it. 
Now, we'll start. Yes. Well, Lucy, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Not to me, to the audience. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Don't look down at the audience. The people in the back can't see you. Oh. Uh, hello. Now, I'll tell you a little trick. Especially when you're new and you might be self-conscious. You look out at the audience, but you don't see them. You sort of look past them. Oh. Well, now, well, Lucy, say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Very good. Oh, thank you. Do that again. Hello. <laughs> what's, um, what's that? What is that business? Oh, <laughs> a little curtsy. Yeah, well, I saw Ginger Rogers do that on the Late Late Show last night. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw her on the show. She's my favorite. My very favorite. But she's very good. Yeah, Fred Astaire was in the picture, too. It was, it was a wonderful picture. You know, at the beginning of it, Fred was an ambitious young dancer playing in a show in Muncie, Indiana. Muncie. You ever been in Muncie? I was close there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ginger Rogers is one of the chorus girls in the picture, and Fred's up there dancing away, you know, and Ginger's in back of him, kicking with the girls, you know, and she accidentally kicks Fred. And the people laugh, and Fred is very embarrassed, you know. And then the girls go off stage, and, and, and Ginger starts for her dressing room, and Fred comes off stage, grabs her, and starts bawling her out. And that poor little thing is on the verge of tears. She's hurt. Not her, or him. Oh, him. <laughs> it hurt where she kicked him. Oh. <laughs> and he tells her she's nothing but a, a clumsy clown with two left feet. And he calls her a, a no-talent nitwit. And then she calls him a swell-headed nincompoop. Yeah, and that's when they realize that they really love each other. It always <laughs> so, later that night, he goes over to her apartment to apologize for bawling her out, you know. And he knocks on the door. <laughs> he knocks on the door. <laughs> if that's Fred Astaire, I'm giving up cigars. <laughs> Good evening. Nice to see you. I hope you don't mind my dropping by. No, I suppose you came by to transact a deal. Yes, yes, I did. And to see how my client is getting along. Well, well we've been rehearsing a little bit. Yeah, oh. Mr. Burns is teaching me how to say hello. Oh. Um, hello. <laughs> oh, my, that's very good. <laughs> You'll be worth a lot of money, this girl. Well, I don't discuss money. I like to talk to my agent. Hello? Yeah, no, 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 no more. Sa sa save it, save it until after we've made a deal. Oh. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Mooney, yes. I, I hope you don't think I'm taking advantage of you. How's that? Well, show business is new to you, and you'll be dealing with a man who's had a lot of experience in theatrical deals. Well, what's the difference? Money is money, and after all, a man with my vast banking and financial experience, it may be that your agent will be the one who is at a disadvantage. Oh, no, no. My agent is very good at money matters. Oh? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Hello? Mr. Burns, your agent's calling. Good, put him on. Hello, George, this is Jack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> time, Mrs. Carmichael's agent is here right now. Fine, let me talk to him. Uh, good, here he is, his name is Mooney. Mr. Mooney. Hey, Mr. Mooney, my agent. Uh, what's his name? Benny, Jack Benny. <laughs> Jack Benny is your agent? <laughs> we'll be fair to you. We will not. I'll handle this. You just get us booked someplace. I got your break-in date for tomorrow night at a club in Santa Monica. We open tomorrow night at a club in Santa Monica. Oh, that's wonderful. Great. The bookers from Vegas will be in to see you, and I... So I hope the act's good. Don't worry, she'll be fine. I mean you. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, George Burns and Lucy Carmichael. Hello. Well, now that you're on the stage, what are you going to do? Oh, 
Well, when I was in the beauty parlor this afternoon, I heard a wonderful joke. Would you like to hear it? It had everybody dying laughing. With all I dare. Oh, well, this one man looked up and said to the other man, don't ask me, I just got here myself. <laughs> <laughs> the joke? Well, there was some stuff ahead of it that I didn't hear. <laughs> That's the line that they were dying laughing at. I, um, I wouldn't tell that if I were you. Too old? Oh, yes, it's been kicked. Oh. Let's, um, let's talk about your brother. Oh, which brother do you want to talk about? The one that's married or the one that's in love? <laughs> oh. Oh, the tall one. oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's my brother, Harry. He's with the FBI. Your brother's with the FBI? Yeah, they picked him up in Kansas City. <laughs> so the FBI picked him up? Well, they had to. He couldn't pick himself up. <laughs> Loaded again, yeah. poor Harry. Hasn't your family ever tried to do something about his drinking? Well, we sent him to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist worked and worked to get to the bottom of Harry's drinking. And finally, he found out Harry's problem. What was it? Harry likes to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have our reasons. I think Harry drinks to forget. Forget what? That he's a kleptomaniac. He's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Harry was always going into stores and taking things, so you know what my mother did? What? Well, she took some adhesive, and she taped his hand shut all but this one finger. Taped his hand shut all but that... Why? Well, so he could play marbles with my other brother. <laughs> you can't play marbles with one finger. Well, Mother did that to even up the game. You see, Harry didn't have all of his fingers, and my other Your brother, brother didn't, didn't have, have all, all of his marbles. <laughs> that made the game even. Yes, it did. But when your mother taped up Harry's hand so that he only had one finger, did this stop his shoplifting? Well, it helped. All he could steal were donuts. Harry likes donuts. That's right. It was the donut that broke Harry's back. <laughs> donut broke his back? Yeah. You see, he had a donut in his right hand pocket and he tried to get it out with his left hand. And broke his back. Yeah. <laughs> well, the next time he's got a donut in his right hand pocket, tell him to try to take it out with his right hand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of hard when you got your pants on backward. <laughs> He had his pants on backwards? Yeah. You see, Harry had a suit with two pair of pants, and he put one pair on frontwards and one pair on backwards. So that he could walk either way. That's when the truck hit him. <laughs> what truck? The truck that didn't have its lights on. So why didn't the man in the truck have his lights on? Well, he didn't have to. It was daytime. <laughs> Well, if it was daytime, didn't the man in the truck see your brother coming? He didn't know it was my brother. <laughs> oh, he saw two pair of pants coming toward him, and, and he, he drove, drove right, right between, between them. <laughs> well, that's our music cue. The marching... Two sweethearts in a country town, the neighbors say, Lived happily the whole day long. Until one day, told he must go away. She wondered then what could go wrong. <laughs> he said, You know, it's true, I love you best of all. And yet, it's best that we should part. Just as he went away, he heard his sweetheart say, Here's a pretty temper, Lucy, play with it. Although it broke her heart. Some of these days. Yes, some of these days. Miss me, honey. Some of these days. Yes, one of these days. You'll feel so lonely. You'll be feeling oh so You'll lonely. Miss my hugging. You used to love it when I hug and you squeeze you. miss my kiss. You'll ask for more, and you I tease miss you. Me only. You want me only. When you go away. When you're a million You'll miles. You'll feel so lonely. In the evening when the sun goes Just down. Just for me. Be on the other side of town. Oh, you know how. Oh, you know, baby. You had your way. That you went and had your and way. And when you leave in me, me in I know twill grieve you. You can bet you're gonna be full of sorrow. Miss your blue eyes, baby. baby. Some of these days. Eva!
and show business are different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this girl is sensational. Yeah. And the men from Las Vegas have offered $10,000 for the act. $10,000? They'll go as high as fifteen if you won't sing. <laughs> we'll take the ten. <laughs> Did you hear that, Lucy? We're going to Vegas. Oh, that's just wonderful. You know, this is like what happened to Ginger Rogers in that picture last night. The producer saw her on the stage. She got an offer to go to Vegas, but she'd been with Fred so long that she didn't want to be... <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. Burns, I can't go. Why not? Oh, because I can't leave Mr. Mooney. <laughs> but I want you to go. Oh, no, you don't. You need me. I don't need you. I want you to leave. Oh, I couldn't leave you any more than Ginger could leave Fred. Not even when Fred pretended to be mad and said things that were very nasty to make her mad. Mrs. Carmichael, please get it through your head. I want you to go with Mr. Burns. My life would be happier without oh. you. Happy? Happier! Happier! <laughs> That's just what Fred said, because he didn't want to stand in her way. But Ginger knew that Fred needed her, just like you need me, Mr. Mooney. Now, now, now. <laughs> but it, it just wouldn't work. I couldn't be funny out on the stage thinking about Mr. Mooney back in the bank trying to get along without me. Mr. Mooney, you must be a wonderful man. How do you inspire such loyalty? I don't know what I've done to deserve this. <laughs> You're not mad at me, Mr. Burns. What for? This is the story of my life. You, but what about the engagement at Las Vegas? Well, now that I don't have a girl, I guess we'll have to pass up the $10,000. Oh, I'm just awfully sorry about it, but, you know, Mr. Burns, Mr. Mooney has... <laughs> what are you doing? If you think I'm going to let $10,000 go down the drain, you are crazy. <laughs> Some of these days... 